Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So tonight we're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about sign bars. Uh, we've been playing around with them lately, <clears throat> looking at uh, Stan's little uh, speed squares, his uh, stangles or his bar Z squares. Um, uh, he's got a well. We're we're trying to call them stangles, but uh, he's call them, uh, calling them calling uh, them Z squares. Um, anyway. Uh, so we've been looking at sign bars, we've been using sign bars, and a lot of you out there may be interested in making your own sign bar. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to show you how you can put one together, actually a very nice one. And uh, we'll talk about some first principles and, uh, and how the whole, the whole system works. So uh, let's, uh, let's get a hammer and a nail and a 2 by 4 and let's make a sign bar. <laughs> okay, so here we got a, a various selection. Actually, this is my sign bar collection. Um, so, actually, you know what? I have one more. Let me drag the one more out because it's significant. Only because this one's significant because this is the first one I ever bought. Um, and it's got its own little base to it, okay? And this is three inches center to center here, okay? Um, 75 millimeters or whatever. Um, that's the first one I bought. And I've used, I've used that a fair amount, okay? Um, the second one I got is, I believe, this one here. And I got this one um, because it it's a V block. You can put something around in there. Although in practice, uh, um, it doesn't come up that much. <laughs> anyway, it sounded like a good idea, and it fits my uh, other V block clamps. It, um, it was a good, I, it was a good thought, but uh, I think I've only used this like once uh, in all the time that I've had it. So uh, it looks pretty pristine still. Now the one I've used the most probably is this guy here. And I got this from um, this toolmaker, this Dutch toolmaker I used to work with. In fact, his name is right here. That's Fred Van Beber. Um, anyway, he made this in high school, I think, uh, or tool and die maker class um, as a kind of a class project. Um, anyway, he, I ended up with this. Um, he died, and uh, and uh, I, I got some of his stuff uh, from his wife. Um, anyway, uh, that was one of the things, and I. I cherish it, um, and it's actually kind of a convenient size to use in the uh, in the Kurt vise. So um, okay, so that's that one, and then um, the next one I got. Let's see, was probably this one I think. Um, this one or this one? One of these two here. This one I just like because it's just an elegant design here. This is wire EDM cut out of a solid piece here. Um, it's quite well made, although um, it does not agree with my two um, my two fancier ones here. Okay, um, but when I say it doesn't agree, we're talking about um, you know a few tenths over uh, um, you know say five or six inches, something like that. Uh, these two agree almost spot on, so uh, I tend to trust these two the most. Uh, this one the second most. Um, uh, third, yeah, whatever, later on. Uh, and basically it's just by configuration. So anyway, that one's kind of cool. Um, and now all of, the, all of the ones that you've looked at here so far are kind of these, uh, these zigzag ones here where they have a, a step for the roll and then another step. And this allows you to adjust the distance between those rolls very accurately. Um, so you can grind that shoulder and you can grind that shoulder and what's neat is if you overshoot you can just grind one a little more so you can't kind of screw it up so um, if you end up too short or too long so if you're too long you grind a little off of this one if you're too short you grind a little off of that one right so uh, um, anyway um, this is a good configuration once again it's not too tall goes in the Kurt Weiss nicely and you can get some stuff going on in there too. Um, the last one is this one here which is kind of a fancy pants one here. This is Taft Pierce. Um, I just love this color of this velvet in here. Purple velvet if you can believe it. 
And this is a laboratory grade uh, sign bar here. Um, and like I said, it agrees with this one We're very, very, very closely, uh, closer than I can, uh, than I can discriminate. Um, but this one's made a little bit differently here. So you can see here that it's a bar that has holes in it and then these rolls are inserted in the holes. Okay. Now, if I was going to make my own sign bar, um, this is probably how I would make it. Okay just with average milling tools and uh, tools available to uh, um, the home shop guy, you could make a very, very nice sign bar if you were very careful, okay? Um, but what I'm gonna show you tonight is something that's even more interesting that uh, um, pretty much anybody could make. And um, it's kind of based on this principle here. So uh, let me clear the decks here a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'll drag some more stuff out and uh, I'll show you how we can put a sign bar together. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'll leave this one out because this one's kind of pertinent to our, uh, to our discussion. And, um, um, we'll talk, and I'll change the camera around and we'll talk about that. Okay, so just to demonstrate the, uh, the principle of the sign bar, we're going we're gonna to use a... Uh, um, a carpenter's version of um, a rough carpenter's version of a sign bar. So, just to illustrate the principle here. So, what we're going to do is we got a two by four. This is your standard piece of two by four here, and we're just going to do a little bit of layout with a combination square and a pencil. Um, so, let's just go ahead and do it. So, we're going to mark a. Uh, um, a center line on this to start with. So, okay, and down here. Okay, so we got a center line. And uh, then this piece is, it's 12 inches long, about 300 millimeters. So, uh, we're going to make a 10 inch sign bar, is what we're going to do. So, what we'll do is we'll come in. Mark the intersection there, and then we're marking intersection at 10 inches. Okay, so our center to center distance is 10 inches. Okay, all right. So then, what we're going to do is for our uh, our pivot pins, we're just going to use a couple of nails, carefully installed on our intersections. Kind of get those square with the world. All right. Okay, so we got 10 inches center to center here. Okay. Just lay out dimensions. Now, what I did was uh, um, I, I went ahead and cut a block, and this is this bandsaw here, and this block is five inches long. Okay. So, theoretically, if we put this up, now we got to put something under here, though. Uh, at five inches, we're going to get our our uh, our 30 degree angle. So I, I got one smooth side here. So, so what I'll do is I'll just these are the, just basically equal blocks. I just want to raise that up so that it's bearing on the pin, like so. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to get something to prop up against the back here. And um, let me grab something and I'll change the camera around. Okay, so I got a piece of uh, a piece of angle up against the back here to uh, just to kind of hold things in uh, oops, kind of hold things in place. So now what we want to do is we want to check that angle. All right. So what we're going to use that's just convenient just to kind of illustrate this principle is I have this uh, electronic level here, and we're just going to put that down here and turn it on and. What we're going to do is we're going to calibrate it with an alternate zero against this, uh, my welding table here. So I'm going to hit alternate zero. 
And this should zero out in null. Okay, so we're zero, zero. So now what we'll do is we'll bring this up here. And we'll put that in place. And I'm just going to hold it. Okay, so it's settled out now. 29.9 degrees. So, okay, nails and pencil lines were within a tenth of a degree. Uh, not too bad. So if we extend this distance, we can do even better. We have, you know, uh, we have to be less accurate even to produce this. So let's see, let's move it around a little bit. Okay, so, you know, we're on wood, okay? I mean, we gotta keep this in perspective, right? Yeah, I can wiggle this around a little bit. Okay, so one to two tenths of a degree, all right, with nails and two by fours. All right, so I think that kind of just illustrates the principle that this works, and this is all just layout lines with, uh, with Sharpie or pencil, and no particular care taken to, uh, to put it together, okay? Um, you know, like I said, it's kind of rough carpenter uh, kind of tolerances there, right? Uh, frame in a house kind of stuff. All right, anyway, that's just kind of an illustrative uh, example of, uh, of this principle. Okay, so, you know, we were talking about this, this Taft Pierce uh, sign bar, and if you were going to make one, this would be the kind of the configuration to make. So how you would start with something like this is, uh, um, you know, you'd get a flat bar, okay, and uh, the length is kind of arbitrary, okay. Um, what we care about is um, that at least one surface is nice and flat, okay. So you could buy a, a piece of um, uh, ground flat stock or just actually mill a, a piece of flat bar to get a nice flat edge and you could lap that on a surface plate and get it real nice, okay? Then the other thing we care about is um, these rolls, okay? Or I just call them rolls or plugs or pins or whatever, right? And um, um, what we care about is that these are very accurately the same diameter, okay? So one thing, so what's available to us that's, uh, that's nice and round and um, um, accurate in diameter, right? Well, you could buy some gauge pins um, and um, they're not particularly expensive, you know, they're five or six bucks for something in this size and they're this long and you get enough for two of them um, out of one, so you could cut one of those in half. And then what we could do is bore a hole here, and we could bore a hole here, and then, um, let's see, is that in the frame? Yeah, it's in the frame. So you bore a hole, and you bore a hole. Okay, and then we just take our pin, okay, and then we just press it in, and then we take the other pin and we press it in, right? So on a sign bar, what they're giving you here this one is 5.000, and what that means is from the center of this one to the center of this one is very accurately five inches, okay? Well, in reality, that number, we don't even really care as long as we know what it is, okay? So it could be 5.1 or 5.5 or 5.001. Um, we don't really care, oops, uh, we don't really care as long as we know what it is, okay? and we can very easily measure that, okay, for example, by measuring over the outside of these two pins. So if these are exactly the same diameter and we measure over the, over the top of this, we can very easily determine the center to center distance, okay. Now there's other things going on, there's geometry, so you gotta be careful when you do the holes and all that. Um, but um, as long as you know that dimension, the calculation is just slightly more complicated because you have some spare change uh, to work with, and but it doesn't really change uh, the complexity of the uh, of the of the calculation. Okay, so but this is all it's all hardened and ground and just very durable and nice. So how the heck can we make one ourselves that? Um, um, with no tooling and no money, <laughs> right? No tooling and no money, how can we make a nice durable sign bar 
that we can use in the shop and uh, we can do it in an afternoon. So how can we do that? That's our challenge. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it in just a second. Okay, so what's Joe Average got in this shop? Let's, uh, I think uh, most of you guys that have a milling machine probably have a set of, of uh, hardened and ground parallels, right? And this is just a, you know, Cheapco, one-eighth thick, three-quarter wide, six inches long, um, parallel to go in the mill under a part, right? Um, now, what's interesting here is, if you notice, this has a couple of holes in it. How do you like that? That's pretty good, huh? Um, and most of these sets that you see like this have a couple of holes in there. So, geez, you know, we're, we're halfway to the races here, right? We got a ground and parallel bar with a couple of holes in it. I mean, we're, we're three quarters of the way done, right? So how can we go from this to this and, and, a, and a decent sign bar, okay? So what does Joe Average have uh, uh, accessible to him that, um, that might make a good, uh, a good roll? How about a couple of small bearings, okay? Um, well, those are a little smaller than that. So these are a couple of instrument bearings here. They happen to be uh, 5 eighths of an inch in, uh, in diameter. And um, I think you guys can see where I'm headed with this because this is the next part of it. All right. And I'm missing a washer here, of course. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to fetch another washer here. But I think you're getting the idea here. So these flathead screws happen to just drop in there just nicely, okay? So... What we're going to do is we're going to plop a bearing on there like that, put a washer on it, put a little nut ski on there. Okay, and the so the screw, what we don't want to do is we want to control that center distance. So we want to kind of leave some, some wiggle room around there so that we can adjust this so that these are parallel with the bottom and that we adjust the center distance between those. So we're just going to kind of leave that just finger tight and um, I'm gonna grab a, a, another washer since I kind of I kind of dropped uh, I dropped the washer or something here let me let me get another washer okay so I got another washer here all right so now hey we're starting to look pretty good here looks kind of familiar huh well this just happens to have a different distance okay and it's nominally about four inches uh, roughly 100 millimeters in this case, okay? So now what we got to do is we have to kind of set those up and get them, uh, get them oriented. So let's, uh, I'll change the camera around and then I'll show you how we can do that. And then um, we'll try to get the centers adjusted well. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll take a measurement and see what we get. Okay, so we're down here on the surface plate. I'm still, I'm still loose. So what I've done is taken, I know what this space is. I know the width of the parallel, I know the diameter of the bearing. So I've just put a shim under here um, to take up for that. So my parallel is sitting on the surface plate. My, these parallels are on the surface plate and that's half that distance. And actually I don't even really care as long as they're the same, okay? That's what I care about. So now what we'll do is we'll We'll snug, uh, do some screw snug in here, or screw reefing here, <laughs> of course. So why do they do that? They make these ignition wrenches, and it has 1132 on one side and 5 sixteenths on the other. I don't get that. It should be the same size, like a normal wrench. Huh? Does it? doesn't make any sense to me so this is the you know if you want to set this up fancy you know this takes a little while to do okay we're just gonna try to kind of set it up crudely here and um, and see how well we do okay so one of these I got this one I got kind of tight. So that one's gonna be my my anchor rod. 
or my anchor point, and then I'm going to adjust this one, and then we'll snug it down. Okay. All right. So let's let's uh, change around here a little bit like that, and then I got to make sure I'm in focus here. So I got a my kilometer here, and I'm just going to base yeah, chase this around. Is what I'm going to end up doing here. You know, actually, I should probably uh, put this in the vise and uh, just make it a little easier to uh, um, to screw around with here. So I know what my number should be. All right, it looks like I'm a little long. Why does this keep it? Okay. There we go. Oh yeah, I got a ways to go. All right. Well, let me let me adjust that. I think you get the idea here. I gotta. I need a third hand. Chuck, where are you, damn it? Um, to hold that down while I uh, while I make some adjustments, okay? Um, and the idea is I'm trying to get a certain center distance or a known center distance, okay? And um, um, so we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so this is the this is the the best setup I got here. So this assures that. Um, these are parallel with the top and what I've been doing is just very gently this one's fairly well snug down now as I just kind of tap it down and over and then I just take a little measurement and I've been creeping up on it here I got about two thousandths to go here And this is kind of old-timey toolmaker stuff here. They used to call this buttoning. Um, okay. The last little bit is the is always the uh, the hard part. All right, with about a half. Okay. Okay, we're getting close now. About a half a thou now from what I can read. That's pretty damn close. That's within a couple of tenths now. All right, by the micrometer. Should I give it one more hit? What do you think, guys? I think so. Let's try that. That was pretty wimpy. <laughs> All right. I think I like that. Okay, I think we're gonna try that. Okay, so that didn't take too long. And this is pretty snug, like I said. Um, actually, let's uh, let's give it a little more. It might move. Yeah, that wasn't that tight. Let's see if we screwed that up. All right, looks like we might have changed a little bit. Hmm. Actually, no, it's pretty good. Oh, okay, I'm pretty happy now. Pretty happy now. Okay, so uh, now let's set up and uh, let's um, let's take a measurement. And um, what we'll do is uh, we'll measure something with the good sign bar, the quote um, fancy pants one, and then uh, with our little homemade one here, and uh, and see how we did. Okay, so. We got a, we, we're set up here, we got our stack of gauge blocks. Uh, we're up on some parallels because this style, the corner hangs over so you have to lift it up. Um, that's one negative about this, that particular style. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and sweep the top of this. And it's probably hard for you guys to read the, uh, 
read the indicator, okay? I don't know. The, the damn glare on these things, and uh, I. Okay. So that's pretty good there, okay? And no, the indicator's not broken. All right, it just happens to be pretty good. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll change the setup around and we'll put our uh, our cheap co uh, <laughs> our cheap co sign bar up there in the same kind of configuration with the same uh, um, with the same uh, triangle facing the same direction and all that, and then uh, we'll get a uh, we'll get a reading on with this guy and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so we've changed the setup around. We had to change the height of our sign block, or excuse me, our, uh, our gauge block, um, because the center distance of this sign bar is different. This, this guy is a five inch center to center, and this is a, a quote unquote four inch center to center. Okay, so that makes the stack a little bit differently, different. And also, I have a, just a one, two, three block kind of holding this up against here because that edge is so thin. You know, ideally this parallel would be thicker, um, um, you know, more like this uh, kind of a thickness, you know, that would just make it a little handier. But let's go ahead and sweep this and see what, uh, see what, uh, see what we get. So we got a zero there. Everything looks pretty good. All right, a little deviation there. So one point seven thousandths. Okay, index is good, and it is coming up. One one point seven, one point eight. Now, okay, so. That's the difference in the sign bar reading, okay? It's the same triangle, okay? Um, so, now, we'd have to do a little bit of math to see what that is, but uh, um, it's, what is that? Um, well, what's this distance here? So we can, you know, we can do a little figure in there and see what that is. Okay, so that's about five and a half inches long, okay? So, um, well, let me grab my calculator. Let's do a little uh, mathocratics here. Um, so, let's see. What did I say? It's five and a half, right? So, the sine of one degree is um, 17 and a half thousandths. Um, times 5.5, um, 60 divide. Okay, so over this distance here, okay, over this distance, um, one minute of angle is our error, okay? So 1.6 thousandths, okay, um, over five and a half inches is about a minute of angle, okay? So without trying too hard, we're within a minute of angle, which is pretty good, okay? That's pretty good for some ball bearings and some machine screws and a little bit of tapping with a hammer. Um, so uh, I'd call that a kind of a successful experiment. And if you had an angle standard that you could use to check that, right, you could probably dial that in even closer, okay? The problem is, is that you don't have any length standards, right? So the best thing you have is a, uh, um, you know, is a micrometer and a and a, a calibrating standard for a micrometer. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's a, kind of an interesting experiment. Okay, so that kind of wraps up this segment about the uh, about the sign bars, and I just wanted to close out and say how powerful a principle this is. And you know, we call something like this a first principle, right? Um, it's mathematical based. And you know, with a pencil and a, uh, a length standard, you know, a ruler basically, 
Um, that some of you guys are familiar with a, a combination square set, right? You know, and you can set angles with this, right? Um, so this, these are divide, these are one degree divisions here on this circle. Okay, now they're pretty close together. They're pretty close together because this circle is small, right? Okay, well this circle's considerably bigger, and um, but and you saw what we did with the level, right? Is we took those divisions and we split those into ten parts, okay? Because we were th within about a tenth or two tenths of a degree, something like that, you know, somewhere in the noise. And, you know, you can question the accuracy of that level too, right? Um, but for intents and purposes, you know, we split those divisions roughly ten times, okay? And, um, and then this, this gives you a way to make a fairly precision uh, little sign bar and then deconfigure it and reconfigure it anytime you want. Now keep in mind that um, the longer the distance between these center rolls, uh, the less sensitive the whole system is. Uh, this happens to fit in a Kurt Weiss really nicely. Um, so, um, you know, four or five, three, four, five, six inches is uh, about what you want in, uh, uh, for working in the mill. Um, anyway, hope you like that and, um, um, you know, throw some comments up uh, if you got questions and uh, try some of this stuff out yourself. It's kind of fun.